Hey guys, it's Lori with Ellen's Crafty Creations and I want to share a new album with you and a tutorial so stay tuned after the project share I will do the tutorial quickly. It's There's only one page style so it will go by fast and this is an album that I made using the Gypsy Rose collection by Photoplay and I've done something a little different with the covers and I'm going to talk to you about that for just a second before I open the cover. Um, I used an idea by um, that I came across from Scrap Queen who is also on the design team for Country Craft Creations and she had used contact paper to cover one of her recent albums so I thought what a cool idea I want to try that so I purchased this contact paper on Amazon and it does have kind of like a wood grain feel to it and it's just adhesive on the other side and I covered it, my album, with it just like I would using paper. I didn't use Tyvek or anything. I just used the contact paper because I wanted to see how it would do. This is the second one that I've done this way. I did a folio using it too. And I didn't like how it turned out very well. Um, but the album, I like it. And I think it turned out well. Um, the only thing is, it seems like it's not quite, like my album's bending a little bit this way because I have a heavy waterfall on the other side. So that's the only argument. Otherwise, it covered it beautifully. Um, so let's talk about the album. On here, I've just layered a couple of pieces of the design paper. This was my favorite sheet because of the beautiful flowers, of course. Here, I took a cut apart and I... Um, stuck this piece of ephemera on the top and just added two brads and then there's my spine again I did two different papers and then there's the back so on the inside you can see it opens up nicely and I did cover it with paper on the inside um, I have a large waterfall that I was talking about and I have just tied it together with lace and this was the lace that Tamara sent me. I don't know if she sent it with this collection or a different one, but it is in her shop. So I have, there's room for 10 photos here if you only put photos on this side. So I didn't cover this side with paper. Um, so there's all of this beautiful paper. This collection is just gorgeous. And I really am super happy with how the album turned out and I hope you like it too. So there's that. I love the lace kind of closure. So on this side it has three actual pages um, but they have lots of flips. So I did my first L-shaped pocket and I really like how it turned out. It's very roomy and it um, at first I was going to leave this part open but I decided to close it and that way it just keeps everything in nice and tidy. So in the pocket I have just um, a cut apart made into a booklet and then another cut apart that I just kind of piece some of my papers together. I use the We Are Memory Keepers corner chopper on this, the one that has the scallop and the ticket stub punch and you can find that in Tamara's shop, that's where I purchased it. So flip this over and I did a large acetate pocket this time because I just feel like when you do the acetate pockets it gives the pocket a lot more give and you can really open it and you can put a lot of stuff in here. I only put one cut apart um, but I really like how that turned out. So here's a stacked belly band and I made a little booklet here. I put a journaling card up there for some journaling and then you could put a photo down here that tucks there and then I have a photo mat up top and I've just taken some pieces of ephemera and then punched out some scallop circles and put them on there for the photo mat and then this actually pulls out and you have like a two spaces for photos here and I put some lace on the side another piece of ephemera and then another photo there and then a piece of ephemera with some some of the paper from the collection and this tucks right inside this kind of hidden pocket flip that over and here I have two corner pockets 
And then this was a, a piece from the ephemera, and I just put some acetate on it and then backed it on cardstock. So, and then you can pull this out and put your photo on it. That's how that works. If I can get it back in there. And I just slipped that right in the pocket right there. On this side, I just have a flap with a pocket, and then there's a cut apart here. And that's so pretty. And they're all blank on the back. Again, my scallop punch. Here, I was going to use this on my cover, but my husband was like, that does not go on the cover at all. So I didn't use it. Um, he said it was too much gold. So I used it here instead, and I, I um, filled in the little bumblebee. This was a piece of ephemera with glitter and all kinds of stickles. And then I have, in each of these little tuck spots, I have um, a journaling card um, on the back. So that flips. And then on the back here, I did where you could put a five by seven photo. So this is a five and a quarter by seven and a quarter photo mat and then just two corner pockets and then it just untucks from here. Now I really wouldn't recommend putting much smaller in this area because I noticed that it will catch on this little L shaped here. So unless you put like another flap or something to keep that from happening. Um, I had smaller photo mats in here and they always kind of caught on this area. So just the larger photo mats in this pocket. So again, L-shaped pocket, cute paper, I have a cut apart, and then I have a booklet with another cut apart. And then here I did, um, with my scraps I did this hexagon pattern. So I took a piece of white paper and cut it the size of, you know, like I would mat this area and then I just filled it with the hexagons and I trimmed them off the edge when I was done and this is what I came up with and I thought that was so cute. I love hexagons and I have another example of that later on. Again another acetate pocket and just one photo mat. I didn't want to fill this book up too much. Kind of the idea of the, po of the pocket is you could stick your own ephemera or whatever you have in there. And then I have these two photo mats in the belly bands. And I love how all of this flows together and that this sticks out. So here you have a piece of ephemera with the paper, two photos. On the other side, again, just um, layered different photos here. And again, I put the lace on the side. I thought that was cute. So all I did with the lace is I put a bead of glue down here and glued it down and then I folded it over and put it on a, you know glue on the other side and stuck it down. So here is this area and I thought this paper all looked really good together. It turned out really cute. And these pockets, the corner pockets again, I did just use my scraps and made small 4x4 four four photos to stick in there. And I like the way all that looks. It seems to come together nicely piece of ephemera there. Again here and I layered my paper, just a photo mat. Turn it over and then a tag here and again piece of ephemera layered on that with your journaling card. And then the corner pocket with the, um, I layered a couple of papers here with the photo mat. Whoops, there we go. Again, my L-shaped pocket, and then I did two photo mats in this one, and um, acetate pocket, and photo mat, little booklet, I didn't do my journaling at the top of that one, and then again, another photo mat. And isn't this paper just gorgeous? I just, I really loved this paper. I fell in love with it as soon as I saw it. I put that in the wrong pocket. It goes up here. And then again, there is another photo mat. These are 3x4 photos. You could use 3x4 cut aparts right there if you wanted to. And then again, I did a 4x6 and then a 4x4. Super cute. Again, the photo mats, I turned all these over. There is paper on the other side because I felt like the paper that was on them really clashed with everything. It didn't look very seamless, so doesn't that just look crazy? So um, I felt like if you put your photos on there and stick them inside, that would look better. At first, I didn't like this paper when I first saw this collection, um, but I thought it looked really good with the stripes here, and I ended up liking it. 
There's that photo mat. And then the B paper. And then I just made a little pocket here out of um, scrap paper. And then again, it's a journaling card. I used every piece of ephemera, every piece of paper, everything I had in this book. Um, two corner pockets again. Um, and this paper, she sent me a, a couple of sheets of, um, is this the spectrum paper? I think it's the authentic spectrum paper. On the cover, on the back cover here, I felt like I had just the stripe paper and I felt like it just was boring. So it needed something. So I added this strip here and then I used these last three pieces of my ephemera. And in the pocket, again, I had done that hexagon kind of pattern. And I thought it turned out really cute. I love that. And it's just a booklet. This will hold um, five by seven photos. And that's it. So I think it turned out really cute. The contact paper is holding up well and uh, has done really good. I was wondering if, you know, how it would do. And I haven't had it rip at all. It seems to be pretty sturdy. And all I did was lay my pieces down just like I would on paper and, you know, put my tape in for the gussets and the spine. And then I just cut the, the contact paper and folded it all down and that was it. Easiest cover I've ever made. So. Um, thank you, Scrap Queen. That was a great idea. All right, so let's get into how to make this. So I've already cut my pieces and everything. There's only one page style. So let me get out my little measurements here in my cheat sheet notebook. So what I've got for the base pages, and I've already kind of, you can see, started cutting some stuff out so that the tutorial is not super long. Um, but it would help if I would have maybe labeled them first, which I did not do. So let me figure out which one this is. 11 and a half. So this is the first base page. So you're gonna need to cut one, p actually three pieces if you're doing three pages like I did at 11 and a half by nine. You're going to score on the 11 and a half inch side at six and a half inches. So this is our first piece and you're just going to fold on that score line, give it a good crease and this is our first piece. Um, and then we can go ahead and add what I call the binding pocket which is this pocket. And this one is cut to 10 inches by five inches. And you're gonna score on the 10 inch side at half an inch on each end. And then we're gonna fold on those. And flip this over to this side where you have your flap. And your binding pocket is gonna go on the top like this. So let's go ahead and glue that down. I'm going to add glue on both sides. I hope I have enough. My daughter was using my glue earlier and he didn't refill it. So I'm going to kind of turn this so I can see and stick it down on each end. So this is called, for those of you who are new, this is called the binding pocket because this is the pocket that your hinge will sit on. So your hinges will sit right here and that will attach to your book, okay? So there's the first one. Let's go ahead and do the L pocket on the front of this page. So to do the L pocket, I've already done some prep work here. So it's cut to seven and a half by 10 and you're gonna score on all four sides at half an inch. Can you see my score marks there? And then what I've done is I've taken my ruler and I've laid it flat and I've measured over from the end of the page to three inches and I've marked it all the way down. And then I took my ruler and then just drew a line this way. And then I turned it 
and then I did the same thing on this side. Mark, marked it three inches all the way down, turned my ruler, and drew the straight line to connect them all. And then you end up with this piece, okay? All you're going to do is you're going to cut this out. Grab my scissors. So I'm just going to cut where I drew my lines. And then I'm going to use this one. Um, if I were making the book, I would use this one as my template for all of the other L pockets. So that way you only have to do this one time. So there's my L pocket. Super easy, right? So what you're going to do now to make it into a pocket is you're going to cut, you're going to miter on your corners just like you would when you're making a regular pocket. And you can even miter on these corners like th that. Mm -hmm. There we go. Just like that. And if you're going to use this for an actual book, this is actually my scrap paper, but you would want to erase any lines that you have showing. The ones around these edges don't matter because if you ink your edges, um, well actually they do matter. So you'd want to go ahead and erase those too because you don't ink the edges of the base page. Okay, so then you're going to fold on all of those score lines. Sometimes this craft paper is difficult to score. Or crease, or whatever you want to say. I just can't, couldn't get the right words today. So here's my L-shaped pocket. So I'm going to add glue to all of these spaces, and I'm going to glue it down to the space page. So it's... It, I don't know how other people do it. This is how I do it, and I found that it was easy to do it this way. And if you don't want to glue it down, if you want to use it as a template, um, you don't want to glue it down at this point, but I don't plan on making any more pages than this. At least I don't think so. Um, okay. Stick. I don't know why I have such a hard time getting the Hobby Lobby craft cardstock to stick. It just takes an extra moment than my other black cardstock to stick to the page. Just because it's so stiff. And here is our L-shaped pocket. Cool, huh? So... Now when I mat this, I did the same thing, and I just cut it to two and a quarter. Um, I measured over to two and a quarter and did my L shape and cut it out to mat the pocket. So I hope that makes sense. Now. We're going to flip this over to the inside and do the acetate pocket, which I've already done here. So for your acetate pocket, you're going to cut a piece of cardstock. I've already cut my inside out. Um, to 10 inches by 6 and a half inches, and you're going to score on the 10 inch side at half an inch on each end, and then on the 6 and a half inch side at half an inch. Now what I did, if you want to make an acetate pocket, you can. I made my border a little thicker this time. Normally I only do half inch around. This time I did um, three quarters of an inch, so it's a little larger than normal. So what you do, let me take this away so you can see better. So here's my pocket that I started out with um, before this was cut out. And I just measured over from the score lines and then from the top of this page, three quarters of an inch, and then drew my lines. And then you can actually see better on the other side because my lines are still there. And there's my lines. So, and then I just cut out the center. That's all that you do. I've shown y'all how to do this a million times. So I just figured by now y'all would probably have it. Um, 
because I've done it in so many videos. So I'm going to miter my corners here and I'm going to throw my trash away. I had a genius idea, guys. I have a little coffee can, or well, a large coffee can, and all of my little scraps of trash on my desk go into the coffee can. And then I empty the coffee can. It's like my little trash can on my desk. Isn't that cute? I don't know. It was a revelation for me for some reason because I always, my trash can isn't near me. And because of the way my room's set up, I can't move it near me. So the coffee can was like amazing. It's sometimes it's just the little things. Okay, so now I've burnished all of my, um, got all of my little folds. And so if you're going to do an acetate pocket, I'm not going to put acetate in here, but you would cut it to, I did mine at five and a half by eight and a half. So cut your acetate. I better write that down. Acetate five and a half by eight and a half. That way I remember to write that um, on the notes below. So you're going to do that and just add your score tape around the perimeter and then stick your acetate down. Super duper easy. So I'm going to add my glue on all these sides. This is kind of a large awkward pocket to work with. I know I don't have acetate on it, but it doesn't matter. So I'm going to stick this down. Yours should have acetate if that's what you want to do, or you can make it a solid pocket if you prefer. And you stick it down here. And there's your acetate pocket. Now let's do the belly bands on this page since we're already on this page. And you're going to cut Where's my belly bands? No, seriously. Oh, they're there. Um, cut two at five and seven eighths by two and a half. On one of them, you're going to score on the five and seven eighths sided half an inch on each end. And on one of them, which I did not write down, you're going to score on the five and seven eighths end at half an inch on each end. And then also on the two and a half side at half an inch. So let's put this one down first. This is the one that has just the two score lines. So we're going to fold on that. And I just kind of eyeballed it, guessed. You're going to start over here and line it all the way up to the side. Because there should be a little, I don't know, about eighth of an inch gap from the um, score line over here. That way all of these extra pieces we've added to this flap allow it to close properly. Now take the other one that has the three score lines and miter the corners just like you would for any pocket. But go ahead and just fold on the two half inch score lines on each side, not on the bottom one. So add your glue on those. This is our stacked belly band. And you're going to stick this half inch place into the first pocket all the way up to the score line and then stick it down. Whoops. Got a little crazy with my burnishing. Okay. So there is our first inside area done. So now flip this over. Let's do the large flap that comes out this way. So you're going to cut that to um, this way. 12 inches by 9. You're going to score on the 12 inch side at half an inch and then again at 7 inches. 
And let's see, this one, kind of fold this in. And you're gonna want to miter these corners of this half an inch flap here, hinge. So you fold on this score line, get a good crease. Now you're going to put your glue on the top of this flap and you're going to stick it into the binding pocket with the glue side up. We don't want to seal our binding pocket, apparently, like I've done. There we go. And make sure it goes right up to the score line, but not over it. Just fold that over. Now we're going to do our corner pockets on this um, standalone flap here. And those, you're going to take a piece at 5 inches by 5 inches and you're going to score at half an inch on all four sides. Then you're going to take your paper trimmer, just like I always do corner pockets, and you're going to stick it in here diagonally and cut it diagonally to give you two pieces. And we'll have to do that again in a minute for the other corner pockets. So to stick these down, you're going to have to miter first. And then fold on those score lines. I'm going to do that for both. And then I'm going to cut the wings off of them. See that little wing? I'm just going to trim it off. That way you have corner pockets. Okay. Now, I'm just going to take my glue and I'm going to stick these down. One on the right side and the other on the left. Or top and bottom, however you look. Right now it's top and bottom. So there's that opening that way. And then they're going to do the other one right up here. There's our corner pockets, super cute. Now this flap also has a pocket, and here it is. You're gonna cut this to six inches by four and three quarters of an inch, and you're gonna score on the six inch side at half an inch on each end, and then on the four and three quarter inch side at half an inch. Miter your corners, and then fold on your score lines. And you're going to add this to this flap right here. And it should line up perfectly on top of the flap with no gaps anywhere. Okay, so there's that pocket. Have a little glue right there. Always get a little carried away with my glue. And then things stick where they shouldn't. Now flip this whole piece over and we'll do our final corner pocket and then we'll talk about the waterfall on the front page. So the final quarter, 
corner pocket, you're going to cut this to four and a half by four and a half. Again, you're going to score on all four sides at half an inch and cut it in half diagonally just like we did before. And I got it just a little bit off. Hopefully that won't matter. Again, we're going to miter the corners and fold. You want to make sure that you do get it directly on the diagonal because it will matter when you mat your pages, when you mat your corner pockets. Now to mat these, you're going to cut a square at three and a quarter by three and a quarter cut it in half diagonally and that's where uh, how you can mat these. Now for the other ones you'll have to do three and three quarters by three and three quarters and then cut it in half to mat those. So this one's going to go at the bottom And then we're going to do this one Diag on the diagonal at the top. There we go. Now, the only thing we have left, really, is, what's that piece? Oh, that's the one I cut. I don't need those. Um, the only thing we really have left is to talk about is the waterfall. Um, but before I do that, since a lot of you already know how to do a waterfall, I want to go ahead and let you know, talk about the rest of the book, so you can stop the video after this if you want, since you probably already know how to do this. Um, so this is really the next, it's just for beginners. So the large photo mats that I used, um, all of the measurements are down below in the description box too, but I just like to, to talk about them in my videos. So these large pull-out photo mats are six and a quarter by eight and a half, so you have that. And then for the booklet that I did in the back, this large one, I made it at seven and a quarter by ten and a half and you score on the ten and a half inch side at half an inch. Um, the measurement for your chipboard is down below. Now you will need to modify your measurements depending on what binding system you use. So if you use the hidden hinge binding system then your measurements are correct. Um, otherwise you need to modify that however you see fit. And that's it I think. And I haven't been giving binding measurements. Um, I could do hidden hinge binding measurements if you would like. Um, I just figure that everyone uses their own binding method and so you know you can go ahead and get use whatever you like. But if you want the hidden hin hinge measurements let me know and I will, uh, in the comments and I will post them if that's something you struggle with. So let's talk about the waterfall. So, oh, one more thing. The pocket on the back page. This also varies depending on your cover size. So the back pocket, if your covers are seven by nine and a half, your back pocket is gonna be, I think I did that right. My covers are a little bit different from y'all's. 
So it would really be 8 inches by 5 and 3 quarters. So, and what I do is like for the back pockets, I cut it to the size that it's needed this way and then whatever length it is, the you know, I use a scrap sheet. So whatever length it is, that's what I keep and that's why it's so tall because I just didn't care. I'm like it just doesn't matter to me how tall it is, so I just use a scrap piece of paper to do the pocket. So you can really do that whatever size you want. So I'm going to go through the next how to make the waterfall and then we are done. So for the base, I cut it to 8 and an eighth by 6 and a quarter. So I do a base on my waterfalls because that helps me line it up straight. Otherwise, my waterfalls are all over the place and um, I'm particular about how straight they are. And then you're going to need to cut nine pieces at four and three quarters by six and a quarter. So these are will hold full four by six photos. So you're going to want to fold on all of those score lines. should have done this before the start of the video so you wouldn't have to watch me do it so I apologize the thought entered my head and then and then I left the house for Hobby Lobby and all bets were off so I didn't even think further about it until I start filming okay all you're gonna do is you're gonna add your glue to the top and your first one you're going to line up at the very top of the page like so and stick it down whoa and it already looks like my I must not cut this correctly So that's six and a quarter. Who knows? So you're just going to keep adding them right below the one you just added. Line it up. See, this is why I need this piece of paper. Otherwise, it gets all crooked because I can't ever get anything straight. I need to refill my glue. I like using the smaller bottle, even though I have to refill it a, refill it a million times, um, because it's easier on my hands, I feel like. By the way, this is Art Glitter Glue, if you're not familiar with Art Glitter Glue. It's the only glue that I use in my albums, and I'm in love with it. I don't like to mess with ATG tape, and I don't feel like it stays as well. I want my albums to last a lifetime, so I glue them. So if you make a mistake, then it's all over with. <laughs> There's not much room for error when you use glue, that is true, but I do feel like my albums will stay together um, better by using the glue. I have more confidence in them. I've made albums with score tape and ATG tape before and they did come apart. So even after burnishing and burnishing and burnishing, so glue is the way to go. You can purchase your glue at countrycraftcreations.com, although they don't ship in the winter time, the glue, so I don't know if it's ready to ship yet. I have to check the website. See, I'm still having to make sure I get it lined up, even though I have this base piece. I'm just terrible that way. And that's it. There's our waterfall. Now what I did 
is this time instead of using some kind of magnets or something, I use the lace closure and I put a strip of lace here and then I tied it around this side so it would stay. So I think that's all that I have. You know, I always like to do a quick flip through to make sure um, all the photo mats are standard, for, you know, mostly four and a quarter by six and a quarter, unless I was using my scraps, which I did in some areas. And I think that's all that I've got. So that was really a relatively short tutorial, I feel like. And I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you make one of these. I love the L pockets. I think they're so cute. And thanks for watching.